right now. Very pleased to have with us on the show uh, from Boston, Massachusetts, Mr. Michael Graham. How are you doing, Michael? Doing fine, although after listening to you listen, insult Breaking Dawn, I may have to just hang up right now. I mean, yeah. come on. Team Edward, mister. Uh, Absolutely. Really? Uh, no. Wh- which one was that? <laughs> I don't know. I, was that the Was that the werewolf? Was that I, the vampire? Is there a mummy I, involved? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm I'm really not. I, I I gotta say the I I didn't know anything at all about this uh, this book series until a couple of years ago. A, a woman in our neighborhood had a Twilight themed cocktail party. Ooh. Uh, now, as I understand it, none of the characters in the Twilight books are old enough to actually drink. Exactly. Uh, and yet here were these you know forty year old women enjoying Twilight teenies and things like that. <laughs> and so ever since then, I apologize if anybody's listening out there who likes the books, but I have just been mocking them. Uh, you know what the books are missing, of course, is guns there are no guns <laughs> in the twilight series and so what's the point really i know well you know you gotta, I, as i understand it the vampires are sparkly exactly so if you don't have guns maybe maybe up twinkles will Actually, make an, if an appearance you're fr- being a southerner as i am when a woman is sparkly that's a euphemism for sweating so i think that's just what it is if it's broken to a just, sweat just just sweaty vampires yeah, my aunt lib would get sparkly <laughs> you know all right, well, listen, we could talk Twilight the entire uh, segment, but I want to talk about your piece in the Boston Herald because this was fascinating to me. I've not heard of the story of uh, Anthony McKay. Uh, you say he's a law-abiding, hardworking American who's trying to protect his family from a drug-dealing crook, and it looks like he's actually going to be uh, uh, seeing the long arm of the law a lot more than a uh, longtime illegal immigrant who uh, illegally got a driver's license. Uh, and it was busted allegedly driving drunk through the town of Framingham. Well, it helps when the illegal immigrant is the uncle of President Obama. So that's another. We'll get to that in a second. Let's start with Anthony McKay. He's a 29-year-old uh, man, father, uh, three kids, his uh, uh, girlfriend, whatever, they're not married, but you know, they're a long-time relationship in a house. And at the end of his 29th birthday party, he hears a noise outside, looks out, and there's a well-known neighborhood drug dealer breaking into the back of his truck where he keeps his work tools. Um, and so uh, Anthony has his girlfriend call 911. He confronts the drug dealer. The drug dealer shoves him. He punches the drug dealer and holds him down until the police can get there. The police get there. The drug dealer has a police baton, a three and a half, a, a knife with a blade that's about three and a half inches long, drug paraphernalia, and a rap sheet. Anthony McKay has nothing except for just the desire to protect the stuff he uses to pay his bills and his property. And so the police... Um, Take the uh, crook in, charge him with uh, his minor with his minor weapons violations, but they charge Anthony McKay with assault and battery for defending his property and his home from this thug. Well, that was bad enough, and I wrote about it at the time several weeks ago. Well, he showed up in court two days ago to be arraigned with an attorney who had read my piece and and was working pro bono. And the attorney thought for sure they were just going to throw this misdemeanor out. Instead, they arrive at court and discover that it's been bumped to a felony. And now Anthony McKay is facing up to five years in prison, longer than the drug-dealing, knife-wielding, baton-carrying thug who was trying to steal his stuff. That, uh, that appears to be insane, Michael. I think it's completely insane, but Massachusetts, um, not only uh, does, do you not have the right to use any force to defend your property, but Massachusetts doesn't even ascribe to the uh, fundamental castle doctrine principle. You're expected to flee your own home if you have the ability to flee. Um, and so uh, what the police uh, spokesperson said at the time, the story first broke, is, quote, we don't urge anyone to fight back ever. We urge you to call us, close quote, which is just an outrageous statement. But our attorney general, Martha Coakley, who famously lost to uh, Scott Brown you know, a few uh, year and a half ago, mm-hmm. she says that it is the policy of Massachusetts to discourage self-help. And they really do believe that, that when a citizen – successfully defends his own life or property, something has gone wrong. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. I, I mean, look, you know, these are, <laughs> Michael, these are the are the same rights that people like Samuel Adams and Paul Revere and John Adams and Hancock and, uh, you know, all the Israel uh, Putnam and, sure. uh, you know, all the other uh, uh, patriots uh, were actually fighting for in Boston. Boston used to be the cradle of liberty, and somehow it's turned into the... Uh, 
you know, the, 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 the grave of individual It is the freedom. cradle of insanity today. Uh, you know, we have the Occupy movement around the country. We have Occupy Boston that has commandeered a uh, section of uh, the, uh, ironically, the Kennedy Greenway, named after the Kennedy family, and they, they're holding it against the wishes of everyone, but the mayor and the police will not enforce the law. And, in fact, the, the, the uh, Occupy Occupods have been blocking traffic for hours at a time during rush hour with no arrests. So as I said in another piece I wrote, why are you bothering to occupy? You already won. It's like the Soviets occupying Moscow. Really, it's not, it's not a big deal. You already got it. And that's this, this overriding uh, far-left insane attitude where the rights of the individual are the last consideration is the dominant approach here in Massachusetts. And so now this poor guy has to go to court. Uh, even though he's got a pro bono lawyer, there are always costs associated with it. And his life is on hold while he finds out if he's going to go to prison for five years. Meanwhile, the same day he was in court finding out that he's facing felony charges, Uncle Ob- Obama's uncle, uh, Obama Anyango, who's been here in the country illegally for 20 years and repeatedly ignored a deportation order and sp- pulled all kinds of uh, scams to get a driver's license and a social security number, he was in court demanding that his uh, DUI case be thrown out because he's entitled to the Fourth Amendment protections of the U.S. Constitution. So here's a practice proud citizen of Kenya who's here illegally demanding our constitutional protections while an American citizen just trying to protect his own property is facing five years in prison. That's the current state of Massachusetts. So what are your uh, what are your listeners saying about this, Michael? Overwhelming anger at the uh, way Andrew McKay uh, is being treated. And uh, we, in fact, we had an impromptu fundraiser for him a few weeks ago just to cover the cost of, you know, documents and research for court. And people really want to help. And the reason is, I mean, no one knows Andrew McKay, Anthony McKay. He's just this guy, you know, mm-hmm. from the paper that I've written about. Uh, but he, we all understand that he stands in for us, that if the police and the district attorney can use this coercive force to scare and frighten citizens into submission, that it doesn't end with Anthony McKay. And none of us want to have to make the decision as someone is breaking into our, our uh, you know, property, into our home, into our garage, into our work, whatever, and one wonder, okay, if I fight – if, if me, the unarmed citizen, fight and beat the guy with a baton and a knife, do I, do I then have to fight the entire Massachusetts legal system to stay out of jail? It's a choice people shouldn't have to make. Absolutely. Michael, again, really appreciate uh, you coming on the program. Great talking to you, sir. Hope we can do it again soon. Oh, no problem. And uh, all the details about this case are at michaelgram.com, and there's also a link there to a, a petition people are signing to try to inc- support Anthony McCain, get the DA to drop the case. And so anything anyone can do would be greatly appreciated. All right. Thank you so much, sir. We'll let you get to that midnight showing of uh, Breaking Dawn now. <laughs> right, to me, I already bootlegged the DVD. <laughs> Michael Graham joining us from uh, Boston, Massachusetts this evening.